Synaptic transmission is all about how neurons communicate with each other. When an action potential reaches the nerve terminal, neurotransmitters are released and trigger a response in the receiving neuron. There are several points in this process where we can manipulate how well the synaptic transmission works. Let's go through some of these steps and give examples of how they can be changed. Making neurotransmitters, the first step is creating the neurotransmitters in the sending neuron. We can mess with this step by affecting how much neurotransmitter is made. For example, in Parkinson's disease, a drug called L-DOPA can boost the production of dopamine, a neurotransmitter involved in movement, to improve synaptic transmission. Storing neurotransmitters, once made, neurotransmitters are stored in little packages inside the sending neuron. We can manipulate synaptic transmission by interfering with this storage process. Take reserpine, for instance. It can deplete the storage of neurotransmitters like dopamine, leading to a decrease in synaptic transmission. Calcium coming in, when the action potential arrives, it causes calcium ions to rush into the sending neuron through special channels. We can mess with this influx of calcium to affect synaptic transmission. A drug called omega conotoxin can block these calcium channels, reducing calcium entry and, as a result, decreasing neurotransmitter release. Releasing neurotransmitters, the release of neurotransmitters into the gap between neurons is a crucial step. We can manipulate this by targeting the machinery responsible for release. A well-known example is botulinum toxin, which interferes with the release of acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction, causing muscle paralysis. Neurotransmitter binding, once released, neurotransmitters bind to receptors on the receiving neuron, setting off a response. We can manipulate synaptic transmission by changing how neurotransmitters interact with these receptors. Benzodiazepines, for example, enhance the binding of GABA, a neurotransmitter, to GABA receptors, increasing inhibitory synaptic transmission. The response in the receiving neuron, the response in the receiving neuron is triggered by neurotransmitter binding. We can manipulate this response by altering receptor sensitivity or the signaling pathways inside the neuron. Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs, are a good example. They increase the amount of serotonin available in the gap, enhancing its binding to receptors and affecting mood and emotions. Clearing neurotransmitters, after doing their job, neurotransmitters need to be cleared from the gap to stop the transmission. We can manipulate synaptic transmission by interfering with this clearance process. Selective norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, SNRIs, block the reuptake of norepinephrine, keeping it in the gap longer and enhancing synaptic transmission. In a nutshell, synaptic transmission can be manipulated at various points. By affecting neurotransmitter production, storage, calcium influx, release, binding, response in the receiving neuron, and clearance, we can change how well synaptic transmission works. These manipulations have implications for developing treatments for neurological and psychiatric conditions. Understanding synaptic transmission and its manipulations helps us gain insights into how the nervous system functions.